second game of the regional and a first pitch strike. John Byrne has the plate. I think one delayed four set that first pitch fastball at 96. Nothing at two quickly. Fastball changeup from Caglione to face Forsyth, former SEC player at Mississippi State. Where he was a starting shortstop on a national championship team. Well, two changeup right there. He's used it primarily against right handers this year. It's pretty slider heavy against lefties, but the changeup has really given Caglione three true pitches this year. For Holiday and Caglione strikes up the first that he faces. So change up a 4 0 2. Forsyth fouls it off and then he comes back with a slider and starts it right in the middle. And then it just takes off from there underneath the bat of Lane Forsyth. The Mississippi State transfer who was on the all college World Series team back in 2021 for state when they won it all. This time goes down swinging to start. And the first pitch snared by Caglione off the bat of Carson Binge. Another two way standout. And a quick couple of outs for Florida's number one pitcher. And with two down, here's Nolan Schubert, who had a big game last night. Schubert homered in the second. It was a 9 nothing lead for Oklahoma State through three. They had to put up with a gritty Niagara team. Schubert's from Durant, Oklahoma, originally committed to Oklahoma State. And when Eric Backage left for the Clemson job, pardon me, originally committed to Michigan. When Backage left for the Clemson job, that opened up the path for Schubert to end up at Oklahoma State. Two and Pulled foul. That is good on good right there. You got one of the best left handed hitters in the entire country, but against one of the best left handed arms with a 2 0 count, that last fastball at 95. And mm. Schubert was sitting fastball there just a tick early. Schubert, the Big 12 leader in home runs, he's connected for 21 of them and sends this one deep to right, make it 22, and Oklahoma State strikes first. Night for Oklahoma State. Oklahoma State. One on one. Earhart is from Tampa, Florida. One of a few Florida guys who will play a big role today for Oklahoma State against their home state team, including today's starting pitcher Brian Holiday. Uh -oh. And this one's cranked deep to left. Kevin O. 
Sullivan wants to see if perhaps that was fan interference if that thing did not clear the wall before the fan made contact with it. I think if you're Florida, this is definitely one to take a look at. 110 off the bat. Just didn't get that high, but looked like it was going to be high enough. No chance for Shelnut to catch this. Looks up. Where are the hands when he catches it? I think this one comes back. That's That should be a double. A lot of pressure on that fan now because he could become very unpopular in just a moment. I think if you just check the trajectory, that thing was going to hit off the top of the wall and be gone. But to you your point, over if you reach fence. over, that's it what you can do. If you reach over the fence, then it kind of takes the judgment call component out of it as to whether or not you thought it was going to go out. But I, I think this ends up being a double. I mean, at the end of the day, it really didn't make any difference. I don't. I don't think the ball was leaving. You, you. Josh Holiday gets the explanation. We've got drama here early on, and not as much pressure as he's facing. Here's Ian Doherty. Two for four with a couple ribbies last night. And the junior catcher takes a pitch low. All right, so if you're Jack Caglione, how do you recover? Well, it's the first time he's in the stretch, so we'll see how it looks out of that. But you, you talked about the slow heartbeat. He does have that. He's been on the big stage since he showed up three years ago. And for his strike, one on one. The biggest thing is just to not doubt your stuff, and I don't, I don't worry about Caglion doubting his stuff. Tip to the backstop. Caglione's a product of Plant High School in Tampa, Florida. Produced people like quarterback Aaron Murray and Wade Boggs. Had Tommy John as senior in high school, so he was limited when he first showed up on campus in Florida, hitting only. And that even took him a little while to get into the lineup. And when he did, it was Katie barred the door. Didn't pitch his first year. I mean, it, there were. Plenty of stories about what it would look like when he did. Misses with the fastball two and two. Last year had his had his moments on the good side, had his moments on the downside. The, the issue last year for Caglione is when it went bad, usually wasn't going to come back, and Florida would have to go get him pretty quick. And gets him looking. Two home runs allowed by Caglione in the first inning, but he is still. Yesterday's game started with a bang for Florida with a leadoff home run. The first pitch just a hair low to Curlin. It's got a little Rhett Louder leg kick in it. Like it. Catches the edge for a strike, one on one. That is a high leg kick. And he'll sit. Low to mid 90s. The average fastball this year is about 92 for Holiday, but really can throw any three whenever he wants to. Blowing in. Fifty percent fastball, 31 percent slider. Just missed inside. John Byrne has the plate tonight. Lifted to shallow right. This is Binge. One down. Well, a major change to the Florida batting order. Kevin O'Sullivan incredibly impressed with the job that First year Gator Ashton Wilson did, batting in the six hole in just his fifth start last night. Yesterday, I should say. He finished four for five with three doubles and a home run. That'll move you up. Hit 26 at bats on the year going into yesterday. This will be interesting to see. Nebraska intentionally walked Caglione three different times yesterday. He did it with a guy in first at one point. 
Now nobody on base. First pitch fastball is pumped right in there. Got the shift on for him. Caglione is tied for fourth in the country with 29 home runs. He's only struck out 21 times. Major improvement on the contact rate this season versus last year. One and two. He's got a power forwards body, 6'5, 250. And pulls it foul. Curveball that time from Holiday. Curveball there, and, and you'll see two different breaking balls. The curveball is going to be 75 to 78. Slider will be about 82, 84. The movement pattern's a little bit different. Curveball has a little bit more top to bottom. Swing and a miss with the fastball up. That came in at 94, two down. Showed him a little bit of everything. Fastball to start, then they crowded him with a fastball that Keg Leon fouled off, a breaking ball that was fouled off, and then intentionally trying to throw this fastball up and out of the zone. Keg Leon can't hold up. And like you just said, he hadn't struck out a whole lot this year. That's just his 22nd on the season, but the second out of the inning. And so Ashton Wilson now in the three hole, his sixth start of the year. And we talked to him post game on the air last night. His confidence level wasn't really much to write home about going into the Georgia series. A sophomore from Orlando had barely played. Then he came up with some big hits. The end of the Georgia series, which was the last regular season series for Florida. They were one and done in the SEC tournament. And he shows up in Stillwater and absolutely goes nuts. Drove in three. One ball, two strikes. Two and two, fastball up in the zone. Pros and cons being a young guy with very few at bats under your belt in this environment. Uh, pros are you're coming off a really good one, and so now you think you're really good, which is outstanding. That was close. And the decision process, and Kevin O'Sullivan talked to us about it, some of it was he's like, you know what, he's on time to everything right now. And I'll take my chances with somebody that's on time to everything. I would say in this at bat, Holiday did throw a fastball right by him. That one just off the plate to move the count to 3 2. And then he fouls one off. But yeah, I, I mean, his life has changed a little bit in the last two and a half weeks. Didn't have a start the entire year for Florida before they went to Georgia and had to win the series to have any chance to get into the postseason. They did. He starts all three games, starts in the SEC tournament, then has three doubles and a jack last night. He was playing at College of Charleston this time last year. With me at Georgia, Mike Martin's last year, yeah. coaching regional. Remember that senior that oh, Florida yeah. State threw out there that nobody had ever heard of, and just had, carried him the entire weekend. He he had been playing club baseball at Florida yeah. State, yeah. and he already had his job lined up. But then he had to keep calling and saying, "I, I can't come. We made the World Series. We just won again. We just actually, I'm the reason that we just won again. So I'm sorry, but." It was we'll see how this story goes but similar start to the left side of the infield Wolford cut up by foresight and that will close the first inning. It's a one two three frame worked by Brian Holiday pitching with the lead two seasons they failed to make it out of their own regional. And Jack Caglione gave up back to back home runs in the first inning he's facing catcher Ian Doherty now. First pitch misses to Doherty, 6 2 2 12 out of Kingfisher High School here in Oklahoma. Broken handmade bone in late February last year, only got into five games. Pardon me, Brigham. And Brigham flinches at that one. I'm already behind on my scorebook. There's no excuse for this. You're right. There's not. You're better than this. 
I don't know about that. Brigman looks at a strike on the outside corner. Brigman's from Freeburg, Illinois. Do you know what their mascot is? Freeburg uh, Foresters. Close enough. Foul straight back. Can I ask you a question? What did uh, what did Doherty do to end the first? Uh, struck out looking. Thank you. Was I here for that? I got it. Don't worry about it. Uh, three two fastball right there. Strike out looking for the first out of the inning. <laughs> and then the throw got away from Brody Donay, who's getting to start behind the plate tonight. To try to throw it around the horn. So there, there is a little bit of shuffle, by the way, real quick with Caglione. When he pitches, he's normally the starting first baseman. They move yep. Luke Hame into first. Brody Done fills in behind the plate. But you don't have to change the batting order because Cags is hit. Well, he's he's going to hit second wherever it goes. It does change Florida defensively. Heyman is not the defensive first baseman that Caglione is. Gets overlooked a lot with Cags, how good he is over at first. Here's Tyler Wolford at the plate. Wolfer was one for four yesterday. Senior from Farmington, New Mexico, at a Piedra Vista High School. Out of play. The bottom third of the order did not fare well for Oklahoma State yesterday relative to the strength of the rest of the team on a night where they scored 19 runs on 15 hits. Swing and a miss, and the tag applied by Donay for a good measure and one that skipped into the catcher's mitt. That's now three in a row for Caglion after giving up the two home runs and the double that looked like it may be a home run off the bat of Miola. Punches out Doherty looking, punches out Brigham and looking, and now gets Wolford swinging on a slider down and in. Second baseman Avery Ortiz at the plate. Hmm. That was weird. Donay just didn't catch it. Went off the heel of the glove. Ortiz is a freshman from Tulsa at a Union High School. I'm going to jump the gun, but if I'm not mistaken, Union is the uh, same high school producer, our buddy Darinoka. Oh, yeah. That we'll know in a minute. Yeah. Yeah, Union High School. Hey, I got one right. He's back. There's a walk to Avery Ortiz. It's a four pitch walk to the nine hole hitter. Back to the top of the order in lane foresight. I had a really good Big 12 tournament. Went six for 16, drove in three. And he had a monster May. 390 through the end of the Big 12 tournament in the month. 130 starts at Mississippi State at shortstop. And it's a lot of reps. Honestly, the offense is what's made the biggest jump. He was in there originally for his defense because the defense has always been outstanding. But this year, the offense has ticked up, hitting above 300. Ortiz, six of eight on the bases. Oh, two from Caglione. Low. Have you seen Caglione pitch this year? In person? Uh, I have uh, no not in person no no I think it, yeah we see him at LSU I don't know you always have to tell me whether I did or not who am I what am I doing here miss low 97 from Kags. that fastball has been 94 to 97 so far. Mm. It's 
a couple close misses. Yeah, Caglione, you did his game when uh, Florida won 12 to 2. See? Thank you. He did walk five that day against LSU. Huge lead and off and moving and strike three looking. Change up. The Forsyth froze on. It's five strikeouts through two. 17, one of five schools in the SEC that finished with 13 conference wins. And they had to scratch and claw to stay above 500 to be eligible for the postseason as Colby Shelton looks at a breaking ball for strike one. 2017 national champions is a Florida franchise under Kevin O'Sullivan has had its strength in pitching year in and year out but it is a high ERA of 619 the highest under O'Sullivan. One fouled off to the left side and that ERA ranked 164th in the country coming in and this is usually a Florida pitching staff that's going to be top 20 or so in the country. You go on the other side and, and for Oklahoma State just generally ballpark effect everything else usually offense is the first thing that you think of one of the biggest things this year for the Cowboys they've really pitched it they're right coming into the tournament 4 1 2 that's 11th in the country. Fouled off again by Shelton there seems to be real depth in their rotation. Yes. Yeah if this is your two and Holiday's got the good stuff today now. I mean it, it looks like he can throw whatever he wants whenever he wants. Pulled foul. Holiday's a dude that if, if you get him in a in a professional system you can move him pretty quick because not a whole lot more that you're going to teach him. You fine tune maybe there's you add a pitch or something but the controls outstanding with anything he wants to throw whenever. Upstairs to Shelton who was playing at Alabama last year. Preseason second team all SEC coming into this season. He was a freshman all American with the Crimson Tide. And tied Georgia's Charlie Condon for the SEC single season freshman home run record. It was an Alabama record. Two and two. Straight back. Swing and a miss in the changeup. Second strikeout for Brian Holiday. NCAA regionals coverage for all 16 sites continues tomorrow on ESPN Plus and the ESPN app. For more information, visit NCAA.com, the home for all 90 NCAA championships. We've added a few. A few years ago, that used to be 88. Yeah. What did we add, you know? I don't know. But it includes equestrian, which is a sport that they have here at Oklahoma State. It's the last time you're on a horse. Been a few years. That poor horse. I came walking <laughs> up, and you don't think horses have emotions. I will. Uh, I will think otherwise. Put him in a dark place, huh? Yeah. Who came in at a Lake Brantley High School, Longwood, Florida? Well, walks and strikeouts, and a 400 hitter, both his junior and senior season, blown away. was on the SEC freshman team last year Had a two run home run against Oral Roberts in the College World Series and he rips one into the glove of Tyler Wolford five straight retired to start this game by Brian Holiday and that's really the first time that Oakland or excuse me that Florida's barrel one up today too. Fastball that kind of leaks over the inside part of the plate and Wolford just in the right spot. It was scorched at him. 104 off the bat. And now Brian Holiday has set down the first five in his Florida order. There's the left fielder Tyler Shellnut.
And he loops this one down the left field line. It is fair and into the corner. Schubert to get it. Shellnut strides towards second. And he's in comfortably with a two out stand up double. Shellnut probably lucky he didn't barrel this thing up right here. If he barrels it up, it, it probably hooks foul. It goes a little bit further, but off the end of the bat enough that as it's hooking down that line, it stays fair by about a foot. After a line drive out, Tyler Shellnut gets the Gators' first hit of the game. It's a two out double down the left field line. Extends the inning for Dale Thomas. Senior came in from Coastal Carolina. And Thomas looks at a strike. One of two former Chanticleers on this Florida roster. <laughs> Nothing in two. Coastal all tied up with Clemson right now. 3 3 in the eighth. Carson Binge leads off the third. He grounded out back to Caglione. It was a strikeout and a comebacker, and Caglione looked like he was cruising, and it was just not the case. If he's getting that one, left on left, 96 at the knees, it's it's going to be a tough day. If he can keep putting, it. He'll do it again. Deep left field, shall not back. It is gone. It is a third home run of the game for Oklahoma State. Four hundred twenty foot shot for Carson Binge. That's two left handers that have stayed in on sliders against Caglione and have hit him out that time. It was Carson Binge stayed on a slider takes it out to left center field. About four hundred and twenty feet on that one third mm. solo home run of the day for Oklahoma State. Caglione for the first time in this game dropped his head after that one cleared the wall. Nolan Schubert connected against him last time. That's a big swing and a miss. And never allowed three home runs in a game in his career. Inside. This is an Oklahoma State team that 113 of them during the regular season, they've got real pop, and they can get hot as a lineup. Back to back 100 home run seasons for the first time since the mid to late 90s. They homered 22 times over a four game stretch. See you later. Another back to back Jacks for the second time. They've been chopping since the first inning. At what point, if you're Jack Caglione or the Florida staff, do you say, this is a launching pad, and you just got to live with it? Well, you do. I mean, the good news is they're all solo home runs. The bad news is they've now hit four of them, and uh, Schubert's hit a combined 900 feet of home runs in the first three innings today. He is sitting slider. And both of those home runs have been on the slider, and he didn't miss either one. Zach Earhart sends it to shallow right. Wilson coming in. Curlin back. And Wilson with the basket catch. Ooh, Florida needed something good to happen. By the way, for Jack Caglione, four home runs, his first 62 innings pitched this season. He has allowed four home runs in two plus innings tonight. I'll tell you one thing, it doesn't feel like we're going to see a lot of from these Oklahoma State hitters tonight. And that's ground balls. I mean, the approach is to get the ball in the air 
knowing you're probably not going to get four or five hits in an inning off Caglion. They're trying to do damage with one swing, and they've done it four times already. In for a strike to Aiden Miola, who just missed a home run his first time up. To finish the thought, 22 home runs over a four game stretch against BYU in that series, and then against Wichita State in the midweek. Two years ago, this regional played to an average score of 11 to 10, 21 runs per game. Back up the middle, Caglione can't reach it. Shelton gets to it. Fantastic well play by the Gators shortstop. You know, it's interesting. Colby Shelton didn't play shortstop last year at Alabama. He played third base. And the one thing when, when he was looking for some place to go play is he wanted to play short. And I don't know if Kevin O'Sullivan thought that he would stick there, but they said, yeah, we'll give you a shot to play it. He's been one of the best defensive shortstops in the SEC this year. Coming in, you look at defensive runs saved. Colby Shelton is over 10 for the season. You're not going to get that one up. Ground it up the middle. That is just the second ball, pardon me, the third ball on the ground from Oklahoma State in this game. Binge, Miola, and now Doherty. First ground ball hit, and it'll bring Colin Brigham up. Brigham struck out looking his first time up. Only three for his last 39 for the 6'6 junior. He's a big dude, 6'6, 235. Once seen the ball well in the Big 12 tournament. But when he connects, he can launch. 14 home runs on the year. Yeah. Rounded to the right side. Cade Curlin is there. That'll close the third, but not before Oklahoma State does it again. Jack Heckleon is, is normally a very low heartbeat guy. How do you guys handle him in this scenario so far today? Well, I mean, just got to let him go. I mean, it's uh, obviously a big game, and he's uh, he's amped up for it right now. We just got to make a, some better pitches to stay out of the middle of the plate. So, like, it's Holiday so far. It feels like he's kind of got all of them going offensively. What's the approach moving forward against him? Well, we're going to have to we're, we're going to have to get to the fastball early, and then. Um, Obviously, we have one runner in scoring resist. He slowed the ball down. So, you know, we have to get the leadoff man on here, hopefully, and uh, hopefully attack his fastballs. Sully, thanks for your time. We appreciate you. Thank thanks, you. guys. Let's say Coach Kevin O'Sullivan, 2017 national champion. 17th year at Florida. In the first 16 years, he's taken Florida to Omaha eight times. Pretty good. Right? Half of the time that he has been there, they have gone to the College World Series. Here's Brody Donay, the starting catcher, looks at a first pitch strike. I like Sully's answer about Caglione. Like, this guy's a competitor. He's not having a great day on the mound. You let him go and you give him his space. And if he's mad, he should be. He's, you want to throw your glove, throw your glove. Hell, I don't care. I mean, I'd, I'd rather do that than come in and sit down. The, the emotion is not a negative thing as long as it doesn't carry over the mound. Mm -hmm. I mean, once you get out there, you got to put it in your pocket. But let it fly when you get in the dugout. Who cares? It was a shell nut double with two outs, a lone hit for Florida, and Donay fouls this one out of play. Sophomore from Lakeland. The big catcher. Upstairs. I thought it was interesting on an approach against Holiday where we got to get to the fastball and then when they got a guy on base he started to slow it down. He's done this a few times too when he's got no two he's tried to elevate that fastball just it's too high. It's it's out of that offer zone both times to donate.
swing and a miss. Fourth strikeout for Brian Holiday. He has been so intentional with location so far with a fastball, and the misses have been in the places that you want. Trying to go high fastball, 0 2, miss up, miss up two times in a row. Now we're trying to go fastball on the inside part of the plate, and he, he puts it right there. It's it's been clinical so far for Holiday through the first eight guys of this game. Here's Michael Robertson. First pitch strike. Sophomore from Venice, Florida. Two home runs a season. And he grounds it to the right side where Avery Ortiz waits. Two down. And back to the top of the order for Cade Curlin. Stands the reason that Holiday and Curlin would have crossed paths at some time in their playing career, both from Tampa. Curlin out of Berkeley Prep. Curlin showed a propensity for getting in the way of the pitch ball last year. He was hit by a pitch 22 times, second most in a single season. Behind David Eckstein, who was at Florida in the late 90s and set the record in 97. Upstairs, one and two. Winner of this regional will meet the winner of the Clemson regional in Supers. Clemson and Coastal Carolina in the 1 0 game. Clemson leads 4 3 in the bottom of the ninth. Outside. The chalk holds. Clemson would host. Two two pitch into center field where Earhart has plenty of space. One two three framework to get whole hitter Tyler Wolford. If you had a bar that was just called bar, tap to the second baseman Curlin. You'd be awesome. You would be awesome. You should probably also offer generic beer, a can that just says yes. beer. That, that would have to be on the. On the offerings. Menu, I guess, is what it's called. Here's Avery Ortiz. Throw a two out walk from Jack Caglione in the second. When you're having a game like Jack Caglione, how do you hit the reset button in the middle of the game? Um, man, everything this guy has done since he showed up is under a microscope and I, I think that over time you learn to dismiss the stuff that doesn't benefit you and, and have the ability to push the reset button to short Forsyth gathers Clemson just finished off Coastal Carolina that's a 4 3 final and Clemson will move into its regional final tomorrow night I'll tell you what um, there's about five hitters that some brilliant analyst said you're not going to see a lot of ground balls today and since then all you've seen is ground balls. That's a good sign for Caglione because if he's getting ground balls that it's moving a little bit different at the plate because Oklahoma State is trying to elevate and get everything in the air and he's been able to at least slow that down since the back to back home runs and the fly ball by Earhart in the third it was a 98 mile an hour fastball that was turned into a ground out to short Lane Forsythe takes a strike. So the mental aspect helps Caglione. Yeah. Yeah. I, and I don't I wouldn't put anything into going into throwing a glove against the wall. I mean I, I appreciate that sometimes. I mean he get pissed. It makes sense. He, he's got pretty good stuff tonight. And he's given up four home runs. Another one is short. Shelton. 
first one, two, three frame worked by do flipping balls and putting balls on tees and shagging. He's just a baseball player who's trapped half in the pitch. And uh, that energy of loving to be at the yard and being on the field every single day, it just pours out on his one day a week. And yeah, the, the four good pitches that he has and the tenacity and courage and confidence, and you got yourself a tremendous competitor and performer. Hey, Josh, obviously you guys are going to be fired up in a 1-0 game, but at the same time, maybe there's a little bit more when Keg Leone's out there. He's given up four home runs all season. You guys have hit four already today. What's working offensively from the approach? Well, um, I think going into this thing, Kyle, and looking at his body of work, he's uh, been very difficult on right-hand hitters this year. Um, but the, the left hand, hold on, let the right fielder get set. Sorry, guys, I got to coach a little bit, too, like you know, on the side. Um, you know, some left-hand hitters have had some success against him this year, just looking at the splits. And uh, our left-hand hitters worked really hard in preparing to, to kind of approach him. And uh, I think Nolan's hit two homers and Benji's hit one. And then, uh, you know, our right-hand hitters have put together some decent at-bats. But he's a, you know, he's a unique talent. He can do a lot with the ball in his hand. And he's got multiple pitches to have great depth and spin and, and energy. I mean, the kid's a, a remarkable talent. So just trying to go one pitch at a time against him. I don't, I don't know that there's any secret sauce to it other than our guys are handling themselves well. Josh, thanks for your time. We'll let Appreciate you back to coaching. Okay, thank you. So here's Caglione at the plate and against the ship. One hopper to the second. Oh, teams threw it high and he threw it away. That was room service, but trying to make yeah. the throw on the run, charging. And he had time, too. I mean, they, they had it played perfectly defensively, and it was a fastball that got in on the hands of Caglione right there. It's not uncommon to see this error made by a second baseman who was running in towards the base when he's trying to make the throw. We saw it happen just last week in Hoover. Well, and you got time to set your feet, but the reality is you hardly ever make that throw. Yeah. I mean, defensively, you're, you're almost never in that position, and if you are, are charging a ball like that. Florida, for the first time today, has a leadoff man on. Here's Ashton Wilson. So, I know Holiday comes from a coaching family and a baseball family, but he's also got a background as a coach, and his answers remind me of a guy he used to be an assistant for. Corbin. That's Tim Corbin. I mean, that is thoughtful, well thought out, um, and clear. I mean, to give the answer on how we think we can attack Caglione because we got some lefties who can do some damage, but as good as Caglione is, that's a, this dude could write a novel about baseball. There's yeah. no doubt. I mean, we saw the binders in the office the other day. We didn't see what was in the binders, but there was there was a whole lot of binders. Preparation, Josh is never going to lack on. Walking through a office supply store and you ask yourself who, who's buying three hole punches these days he is office depot you better keep them better keep them stocked and start or in uh, stilly Ashley Wilson grounded out the short his first time up Gaglione back to the bag held by Colin Brigham Yeah, I thought it was really interesting talking with Josh about his approach and a swing and a miss for Wilson. Is this idea that he is is so incredibly prepared statistically, but there is an old school bend to it. It is color coded, written in pen. He's got that old school, you know, four color pen in his right hand. Not that there's anything wrong with it, but there's a modern edge to it where you just, you know, find your, your heat charts and print them out and s slide them into the binder if you want versus doing the work and writing everything out by hand. And this one is launched towards left field, but a line drive handled by Schubert. Yeah, he, he grades every at bat on the lineup card. So has the circles with green are good, the circles with red are bad, and then ultimately I'm sure there's discussions about all of those as he goes through. I mean, he grew up on this field. Well, not this field, but Alec P, which isn't too far away. But he, he grew up on baseball in this town, and he's seen his dad do it for 40 years. He's seen Gary Ward do it. He saw Incavillia and Ventura and Bernitz and all the best come through here and he learned from every one of them and the greatest baseball name in the history of college baseball brand bean, bean blossom. <laughs> he was good too. 
You got him as the best name in the history of college baseball. It's up there. Yeah, I, I think it's way you, up there. Can I add some clarity to that? What sure. you mean is the, the best player with the best name? Um, yeah, I mean, it's not just whichever name. one. I thought no, he could really play, but he, he had a Hall of Fame name. Low to Luke Heyman and lined out a 104 mile an hour shot to the third baseman Tyler Wolford last time up. Monty Ferris. That was when Oklahoma State was in Omaha about every year. To third, Wolford a little bit easier this time. And he delivers it on a rope over the first. Lead off Ferris. His freshman year either, but. Since then, both have been great. They've started to move Benj into a starting role. He was outstanding at the Big 12 tournament last year, last week. Most outstanding player in Arlington. And he scorches one to short, diving stop by Shelton, and then he lost it on the transfer. Got to it, but couldn't get the grip, and that'll go as an infield single for Carson Benj. Guess how hard that was hit off the bat? Uh, 110. Or was it 110? No. Oh. So I got a little side eye that I can pull if I want to, mm -hmm. and, and I, I got I got a side eye peek at Mr. Campbell's screen just a minute ago. Fall down a well. Eyes go cross. Kick by Mule. I go back again. Here's Nolan Schubert. He has hit two oh. monster home runs. Let's see if they stay with that. I, I, I mean, and he's he's dialed up and on that too. But both home runs have been on the slider. Today, left on left. You know, they've got that new feature in uh, big league ballparks, the bat path feature. Yeah. I'd love to see it for Nolan Schubert for those home run swings. This catch just a sophomore, too. He's coming back next year. Yeah. It's a pretty good sequence. That's the one. I mean, even if you're swinging at it, there's nothing you can do with it. The two that he hit were elevated in the middle of the plate. If Caglione can put it there to where it ends up in the dirt down and away and you get a swing, he's out. If you elevate it, that's where Schubert has got it. Zach Earhart homered following Schubert's shot in the first. Vince can run a little bit, get Vince can 10 bags. Plenty. Yeah, even if Shelton makes that play, I'm not sure if he throws him out. Catches the edge. Like the same pitch. One on one. How high does Caglione go in the draft? I mean, I don't think he gets past the top five. And I, I don't know if he's going to pitch when he gets to Pro Bowl. I mean, I think he could end up pitching his way to the big leagues just because the stuff is that good. Control would need some work when he gets into the minor leagues, but the, the bat just plays different than almost anybody else in the country. And I don't know if you. I don't know if you want to take any focus away from that. I mean, you would talk about it. The biggest jump this year in Caglione is just selection at the plate. He's walked twice as many times as he struck out, and he's got 29 home runs. Earhart got underneath this one and a shallow center. If you if you have more home runs than strikeouts, you're elite. And do you know who you're going to throw tomorrow night? He said, "Yeah, I do." Nope. Uh, left hander named Smith. <laughs> uh, Travis Bazana, if you haven't seen him for Oregon State, has reached base safely in every single game this season. Just one statistical standout for him. Here's Miola at the plate. Who the Hogs have tonight? Uh, K State, I believe. K State on the field for the second time today. He put 19 on Louisiana Tech in the opener. Kalen Culpepper hit for the cycle. <laughs> T 
tipped and the catcher's mitt two and two. That was a turbo sinker at 95. He can ride it up in the zone if he wants to. If he can do that, then not going to get that one in the air. Two two pitch outside. Hayden's dad, Tony, with a longtime U.S. men's national team goalie. Played three World Cups. U.S. Soccer Hall of Famer. Run around the move and just outside. There's ball four to Miola. Second walk issue by Caglione tonight, and it brings Ian Doherty to the plate. <laughs> Doherty was a standout of Kingfisher High School, just like his dad was. His dad was drafted out of Kingfisher in 1995. I believe they wore the same number eight in high school. Same team. Didn't go. Doherty was also a standout in football and basketball. They won the basketball state championship in 21 and the baseball state title in 19. And he grew up an Oklahoma State fan. Both of his parents attended Oklahoma State. He came here a lot of football games as a child. You think he has Barry Sanders autograph? Uh, if he was at the Wrestling Hall of Fame about 30 years ago, it might 35 years ago. Look out. And the ball forgotten wow. by Done. And the bases are loaded for Oklahoma State. Remember, Caglione on the mound that moves Heyman from behind home plate over to first and then donate catches. And this should have got the Gators off the field right there. Pretty good time to take a, a trip right here. Just kind of slow everybody down. Blocked. And Donate thought it was in his glove. Brigham in, struck out looking and grounded out to second. Nothing in one. Nothing in two. This is a big Oklahoma State team, like physically big. Steve Lutz, who head men's basketball coach here, wouldn't mind having some size like this. Brigman, 6'6, 235. You get Steve Lutz into this. That's outstanding. Uh -huh. Former Creighton assistant. Just came from Western Kentucky. Hits. Swing and a miss. And Brigman with first base occupied, no problem. Seven strikeout of the game for Jack. Chance going to first round against one of the best offenses in the country in Virginia. <laughs> Tyler Shelnut at the plate. Experiment when you're playing with a high leg kick? Um, yeah, a few times. It was a few times I thought the, the other side may have pitches. He was trying to do something different. I don't know if they had him or not, but if you convince yourself you, they, they do, there's a lot of little things running around in your head. <laughs> <laughs> More than usual. Good job by Doherty to bring that one in. 
This feels like one of those games where if you're Florida, you just want to see somebody other than Holiday. It doesn't matter who it is. I mean, he has, and he hasn't thrown the change up very much, but the curveball and the slider he's got, the fastball he throws it where he wants to. It's it's one of the rare nights, or at least it seems this way. And it may have been that way in a Big 12 tournament because he went CG against UCF and allowed just one run. He's got them all. And when he's got them all working, then he can throw any of them at any point that he wants to. Came into the season, had walked just 18 and struck out 118. This is his 16th start. He's averaging just over one walk a start. He hasn't walked anybody tonight. He has struck out six, including Dale Thomas, who we caught looking. It seems unique to pair the high leg kick with the separation that happens between the glove and the ball while his ankles above his head. But he times it up right. Um, and Thomas sends this one to left center. Two down. The biggest thing for me mechanically is that whatever you do, and you can start standing on your head for all I'm concerned, but if, if you can do it consistently over and over and over again, the, bet, the, the chances that the misses are going to be smaller and you're going to be more consistent, the plate just go up. And that's probably just a timing mechanism where leg gets all the way up, he knows that. That's when he can break his hand, start going home plate. I, I wouldn't, uh, I wouldn't change anything right now. Breaking ball fouled off by Brody Donate. The one one. Best pitch in baseball. Back on breakable on the inside part of the plate. Over the middle, it's got a chance to go a long time. On the inside corner of the plate, you're not going to get a swing. Guys give up on it every time. One two. That's inside with the fastball. Well hit to left field, but right at Owen Schubert. Well, Sullivan calls the pitches, and then Brody Donay will operate pitch com. Donay's got the earpiece in to receive the pitches via the walkie-talkie, and the pitch come on the top of his right shin guard. Two and one. It's a lot of multitasking for a catcher. <laughs> but I guess kids these days like technology is nothing. You're know used to it. Now. Yeah. Yeah. It in. Uh, if I'm not mistaken, with the pitch com, so I don't remember how many buttons they have, but it can be a, it's a little bit like Morse code. You can do one tap or you can do a long tap. So you can double the number of pitches with the selection on the, on the unit. If I remember this right, there's 48 different things. Now you don't have to program it with 48, but there's 48 different things that you can program into it. Tap to the right side and Cade Curlin. So those aren't all pitches. You could. No, I mean, you, you'll see fielders sometimes with pitch count. I mean, theoretically, you could tell a guy where to cut it, where to throw it. Um, and there's, there's nothing that says you can't do that. 
Avery Ortiz is 0 for 1 of the ground out to short. Defensive movements, so guys aren't looking into the dugout as much. Station tonight. Oh yeah, that's uh, eight the eight central. Yeah, that's on ESPN get... two, unless I'm mistaken. Yeah, I think yeah, I think you're right. That, that may oh, it's uh, actually, pardon me, it's on ESPN. ESPN. The Una, as they call it. Yeah, no one's sure who they are. <laughs> Four runs on seven hits for Oklahoma State. Gators held hitless. I uh, probably had scoreless on one hit. The same people who call it the Uno. What do they call the uh, platform we were on earlier today? The Nueve. I don't know how you say digital in Spanish. Two balls and two strikes to Avery Ortiz. I believe it's digital. It's a toughie. Full count. It's a third walk issued by a Florida pitcher tonight. It takes us back to the top of the order in lane foresight. The second to Ortiz on the nine hole, too. I'm a really bad Spanish speaker. Yeah. But we went overseas last year. We ended up in Spain. Now my youngest daughter has been taking Spanish since kindergarten. Okay. Spanish immersion. So half of her classes are in Spanish and math and science and all this stuff. And we'd get in the cab and I'd say, hey, uh, tell the cabbie where we want to go. And she wouldn't speak. Like she got stage fright. And finally I said, hey, what? What's the deal? Like you you can speak Spanish. She goes, paying for this. <laughs> She goes, Dad, yeah, I could, but I just thought it was more fun to watch you <laughs> twist and try to handle it yourself. She goes, you can pronounce tapas. That's all we need. I was growing up, we took a trip to Mexico, and, and my father just butchers every language except English, and sometimes English itself. And somebody had helped us, and his response was, gracias, senorita. <laughs> And he meant it. <laughs> Came from a good place. It did. Yeah, he, no. Two balls in a strike to Foresight. Runner on the move, fouled straight back. Late Foresight has had the opportunity to play in two very similar college towns. Starkville, yeah. Mississippi, and Stillwater, Oklahoma, where in both places they cared deeply about their baseball. I thought it was cool talking to Josh Halliday the other day about Lane Forsyth because uh, I, I had forgot that he had transferred here. We had seen him at Mississippi State the last three years, and he raved about it. He's fitting this leadoff spot great. He can really catch and throw at shortstop. I mean, that, that's that's what got him to Division One. Not a bat is starting to play more. Been a great addition to this Oklahoma State team. Met his dad today too. He didn't say to say hi. <laughs> Fair enough. Where were you that you're just running into people? Was it at the ballpark or? I went and got me a little Freddy's in between games. Saw you hammering burgers down the last two days and thought I couldn't miss that party. Breakfast of champions. Runner on the move again. No need to throw back to back walks. So two on with one out. And Carson Binge coming to the plate. He is a two hit game going two for three. The good folks at six four three provide us with deep tools that we use to break down both hitters and pitchers and 
kind of cool when you dig into the platform you pull up and the name binge and you got to choose pitcher or hitter. How's this for an impressive number just home games. Carson Binge is hitting 552 and slugging over 1400 against sliders here in this ballpark. That, that works. Their approach tonight against Caglione was like next level good. You still got to hit it. Um, but what they were trying to do was dead on. What did Binge hit out? Fastball? I think he hit a changeup. I got Earhart hit the changeup. Okay, then he Schu hit a fastball. Schubert hit the slider. Schubert, yeah, both of Schubert's were sliders. Binge does great damage to sliders. His BABIP on sliders is 552. He's slugging over a thousand. That's overall home road. Earth Mars. In the dirt. His batting average on balls in play against sliders is above 500. Yes. Yeah, it's, yeah, it's 552. The Division I average of Babbitt is 319. Pretty simple, just the balls you put into play. Doesn't account for strikeouts, obviously. He has faced a, a much lower rate of sliders and fastballs, yet seven, eight of his 18 home runs have come against the slider. Didn't go there. Joe Blumenauer has the line down third. Ortiz, the runner at second, Forsyth at first. And the 3 2 to binge. Out of play. The ever dangerous Nolan Schubert waits on deck. Just a spoiler swing right there. I mean, it was definitely ball four, but once you commit, you got to try to get a piece of it. He knew that he couldn't do anything with it, just trying to keep keep the bat alive. Up the middle, chance for two. Curl in to Shelton, and on the first leg, threw it away. Racing home from third is Ortiz. They're going to keep Florida on the field. Josh Holliday wants to challenge this. We'll see what aspect he wants to challenge. I don't know if he's going to see if Shelton. And indeed, it will stand 4 6 3 2. Of course, he did. He had so much fun. There's so many kids over there. They ends up. Reaching out to dad later and saying I, I think I'm just going to stay the night here. Michael Robertson hit by a pitch to start the inning. What was your backyard wiffle ball setup? Ours wasn't very good but my buddy Mike Cross his dad built one in their backyard. It was a great spot because you could go over there and have bottle rocket fights which were great and then he had a full wiffle ball field in the back with like a green monster and there was a creek so if you hit in the creek there was a little bit different level of difficulty. Always had goody pop in the fridge, too. I have no idea what goody pop is. Oh, it'll make you give stuff back you didn't take, Tom. High fly ball to right field, binge backtracking and takes a catch. 
Two down. Pardon me, one down. Um, Robin Ventura, nice enough to drop in the booth right there. And now, and this has to be taken advantage of, we got carte blanche at the country club on the Ventura tab. Right now. <laughs> really? Yeah. How late are they open? <laughs> We're about to find out. <laughs> Here's Jack Caglione. It's, it's about that time of the summer, by the way. You just rent, uh, mentioned Bottle Rocket Wars. Uh, kids, that's not a good idea. No, no, don't, yeah. Don't listen to me. Man, Kegs was trying to hit that one to Edmund. He's gone up and out of the zone for the fastball a few times today. Caglione, 0 for 2, reached on an error last time up. Got a unique grip. He didn't want to be too top hand heavy, so he started batting with the index finger on that top hand going up the handle. Kind of like a putter. Fly ball to left. Schubert. Two down. What is the uh, what is the attire at the club? Should I wear my tux? I don't know. Okay, so I can't. I don't remember if it was Robin or if it was Booney. And we were playing at Maybe my Aaron place. Boone. Yeah, Aaron Boone. I don't remember. We were playing my place back in Omaha. And I think it was Booney. And he had a shirt hanging out. And he got every shirt tucked in. And the, the pro came up to me and said, hey, you know, would, would you mind if you could just go tell your friend to tuck his shirt in? That'd be great. I, I said, pro, that's about a 30 step walk and I'm going to let you do that one yourself. I'm going to stand right here and watch it. <laughs> and he did. He tucked it in. Booney didn't look at him like he was an umpire. No. No, he wasn't as fiery then. Wilson 0 for 2 in this one, batting in the three hole for the first time. Ground out and a strikeout. He's given up one hit, by the way. One hit. He hadn't walked anyone. He's hit one. I mean, he has been in total control tonight. But that being said, it's 4 nothing. You give up a few and, and Florida jumps ship, it's a different game. Were you with us on a, a baseball trip to Fayetteville? We had a chance, Fayetteville, Arkansas, had a chance to play one of their nice clubs, and we were with a director who had played a, like a total of nine holes of golf in his entire life. In fact, he was surprised yeah, was when we kept playing yeah. after nine. Yeah. And we told him, he said, hey, we're going to this really nice place. Make sure you wear a collared shirt. And he came out in like a plaid button down. Yeah, button all the way down. Uh huh. Yeah. Yeah, that's why I told him to ride with you. <laughs> No, Hart will enjoy this. You, you guys are going to be partners, and, and by the way, we press on one. <laughs> I just remember we got to the tenth hole, and he goes, "What are we doing? We're playing twice today." He said, he said "I thought we were playing six. <laughs> Foul back. Why would we play six holes of golf?" Uh, <laughs> Three two to Wilson runner on the move and it's fouled off. Michael Robertson was hit by a pitch to start the inning. If nothing else Florida's at least pushing that pitch count up a little bit for holiday right now. But remember last six starts he's going he's gone above 100 in all of those six starts. So he's he's had the ability to hold stuff deep into games. A 
well hit right center field long run for Binge and he gets there he can scoop. Home runs this year for Oklahoma State. It's the most since 1999, that same year when they hit 132. That was Josh Holliday's senior year. Lamont Matthews was a 10th round pick that same season in 99. Went to the Dodgers. Lamont Matthews hit 36 home runs his first year of minor league ball. Between Yakima and San Bernardino. 3 0. Jake Clemente, the new right hander for Florida, freshman. That it's another one that can run it up to this Florida team pitch nine freshmen this year at one point during the year, getting better as the season goes on, but that, that has been tough to overcome. Stuff's not the issue. I mean, he can run it up. The last pitch at 97. Jeez. It's just the experience in getting mound time. The SEC got 11 teams into the NCAA tournament. We're airing on the SEC network tonight. We see a lot of SEC baseball, and it is not uncommon to see velocity like this. Every weekend in the SEC, but a question born of ignorance: Is there similar velocity in the Big 12? Top teams, absolutely. Yeah. You see Clemente's numbers this year: 30 strikeouts and 20 and a third. That, that's the greatest indicator to tell you how good the stuff is. Walk numbers not great, but not terrible. Walking about five per nine innings. It's probably two or so more than you like to see. And here's Zach Earhart. Earhart went yard in the first inning. He's one for three. Inside. The winner of this regional matches up with the winner of the Clemson regional. And Clemson was able to knock off Coastal Carolina to get a berth in that regional final. Oh, provided the winning stroke last night for Mississippi State to put him in this 1 0 game against the number 12 national seed Cavaliers. Fouled off 2 and 1. He beat six walk offs yesterday. That's the most in one day since regional started in 1999. We've hit three more today. Last year, all of regionals, there were two total. Pretty good product this year. Mm hmm. Soft line drive, glove by Shelton. Perfect timing. One out. You like the confidence of the freshman right there. After spraying some fastballs, Kevin O'Sullivan goes walking out. And that time, executed a fastball in against the guy that hit one about 400 feet earlier in this game and got it just enough in, in on his hands and not enough to get it over the head of Colby Shelton. Aiden Miola down on the count, nothing and one. Uh -oh. And he torches this one deep left field. It'll be a two run home run, and he finally got the long ball over the catwalk. 431 foot shot for Miola. Well, that's one way to do it. Keep from fan interference. Hit it to the catwalk. Oh, bright stadium when they built this thing. You can walk around at 360 degrees, and it gives for some great vantage points to watch the game. Pretty good time to be on that catwalk right now. Miola, who just about had one in the first inning, this time takes all doubt out of it. Six runs on the night for Oklahoma State. They have all come on home runs. Ian Doherty at the plate, 1-0.
Here's a 2-0 to Doherty. What were the home run totals you're given for this Oklahoma State team? Uh, that's not 118 on the year. Now tied with Florida, 118. Got him in the knee. That was a 95, too. Okay, so the batter before got the fastball in on the hands of Earhart. Here's what happens if you don't quite get it there. That's actually just a really good move to it. I mean, it's it's in her third and down, and Earhart just drops the head on it. Back spins it out to left field. That one went well, well over 400 feet. Cowboys got it going tonight. Trying to elevate and separate, and they've done it five times. Been a visit from Done and say regionals coverage for all 16 sites continues tomorrow on ESPN plus in the ESPN app. For more information, visit NCAA.com, the home for all 90 NCAA championships. You said we've added two. Yeah, I don't know what they are though. It used to be 88. I know beach volleyball is one of them. Okay. I know it used to be 88. I think if anybody uh, watching tonight would like to inform us via Twitter, what were the most recent two NCAA national championships added? We would certainly appreciate it. Tiddlywinks. Okay. Walk, a two run home run, it hit better than another walk. How were you at paper football? Uh, I, I was actually. Tyler Wolford looks at a strike. The top seed in the Greenville Regional, East Carolina, got eliminated earlier today. And in the nightcap, uh, pardon me, Wake Forest got eliminated. Evansville is hammering VCU 15 to 10. I said that like I didn't watch the ninth inning. I can, I can say with certainty you watched the ninth inning. Wolford is 0 for 3, a strikeout and a couple of ground outs. Uh, that was a 13 0 Evansville lead. Strike three called on Wolford. We're talking about how these high scoring games occur here. At Obrecht Stadium, and, and specifically that Missouri State game a couple of years ago, they led 12 nothing. Yeah. And what did it end up? A lot. Maybe Ortiz has drawn a pair of walks. They led 12 nothing Missouri State did and Oklahoma State beat them 29 to 15. <laughs> like Mike Gundy would be cool with 29. Yeah. In most days you're happy with that number. Okay, I got your nine, your last two NCAA championships to take it to 90, I think, okay. if Luke Stilson, our friend, is correct. The creation of the men's Division Three volleyball championship got it to 89. And then it went to 90 with the beach volleyball championship.
Thank you, Luke. We Hope accept right. that. Yeah, we <laughs> accept that as correct, whether it is or not, because we don't want to respond. Line drive to left field, motoring is Doherty. Bill waved home. The throw is cut off, and Doherty slide makes it a seven nothing Oklahoma State lead. Abra Ortiz just wanted something to hit, man. He walked twice today, grounded out of the shortstop. Satin elevates a fastball. They're trying to go for a slider. I think that slider was coming back in towards the barrel, flattened out a little bit. Ortiz flattens the swing out, drives in another. Solo home runs, two of them in the first, two of them in the third. And the runs just keep on coming this inning for Oklahoma State. By the way, shout out to Luke Stilson. He's the director of athletic communications at Gettysburg College do great work and he does great work. So thank you. Nothing in two. Into the right field corner, Wilson has space. And another big inning. It's a three run frame for Oklahoma State. They said Acer hit a two run home run in the bottom of the ninth inning. Birmingham Southern beat Randolph Macon nine to seven this afternoon for the win. If you're unfamiliar with the story, what's unique about that is that the school closed its doors for good yesterday. Was that game one? That was game two. They lost yesterday. Okay. They bounced back to win today. And by the way, Birmingham Southern was down to its last strike. Webster had already hit a two run home run early in the game, but Birmingham Southern squandered their lead and they had to come from behind to beat Randolph Macon. That's too bad. There's good baseball history at Birmingham Southern back. I mean, they were a division one program for a long time. Butch Thompson played there. The head coach at Auburn. Keep on winning, boys. You got a lot of fans. Not only do they have fans, but they've got their own trading cards. Did you hear that story? Uh -oh. The Tops Company has made an official trading card of the Birmingham Southern baseball team. A portion of the proceeds from those cards will be given to what's remaining of the baseball program. They're also going to give cards to the team to distribute to players, friends, and family. That's cool. Two two pitch. It's one thing to bring your baseball program back from the brink like Cal did yeah. years ago. It's another to bring your <laughs> university back from the brink. I, I don't know if this is going to have that effect. It's a lot of baseball cards. First walk of the night right there for Brian Holiday. That pitch count getting closer to 100 in each of the last six starts. He's gone over 100 pitches. I would think this is it if he can get through the seventh, and then Oklahoma State goes to the bullpen, try to finish it out. Largest comeback of the season for Florida is a four run deficit. It was March 29th against Mississippi State. They've been a great comfort behind team. 15 comeback wins. You said, I think it was like the third. You said I, I feel like Florida just wants to face somebody other than Holiday yeah. and he's got to get out of the game. He's not going anywhere. Uh, no and he's still only giving up one hit. And there's there's times where I mean, if a guy's got all three working and the history that Holiday has this year is is you know that he can go out and deal and go late. Um, it's it's a tall task man this guy this guy is a hell of a college pitcher. Luke Heyman fouls one to the left side he is 0 for 2 in this one. The walk to Shelton makes him only the fourth base run of the game for Florida.
Missed time with a fastball. And he's still at 93. He's lived 91, 94 the entire night. And again, same thing. When he gets 0-2, what I like today, and I've been so impressed with Holiday, is the misses are off the plate where he's trying to put them. Those don't get hit. Strikeout of Heyman got him to climb the ladder on the fastball. Same pitch he just laid off a moment ago. Yeah, just brought it down a little bit to, to make it to where Heyman can offer it. There's been a few times with an 0-2 count. He's got two straight fastballs that, that really aren't competitive. They're too far up and out of the plate. You're not going to get swing and miss. That was. That's just above the letters. Tough to lay off of. And Heyman goes down swinging. That's now seven strikeouts tonight for Holiday. Tyler Shellnut has Florida's lone hit. Came back in the second inning. I'll tell you this, there aren't too many in the country that have a one, two, three punch, like Sam Garcia, who I know wasn't great last night, but he has been great the entire year. Holiday, who has been great tonight, and then Binge is what now is is your three. That's salty. Mm -hmm. And I think to your point, it's the evolution of a staff. Yeah. Virginia just walked off Mississippi State in the 1 0 game in Charlottesville. The Cavaliers will be in the regional final tomorrow night. I think Thomas Jefferson was a baseball fan. <laughs> sure. Thank you. I'll bite. I don't know where you're going. Well, just the Virginia, Virginia Thomas, connection. Yeah. Should put a wiffle ball field in the back of Monticello. Two and one from Holiday. This will be his 100th pitch of the game. Two and two. Still with the ability to throw anything at any count. Get the down count, you think? Probably going to get a fastball. He drops an 83 mile hour slider in there to even the count back up. Now he can elevate fastball if he wants, go back to the slider. Hasn't thrown as many of those so slow curveballs. He threw a few early, but he's gone more sliders as the game has gone on. Fly ball to right, binge. Two down. Hagan Smith struck out the first batter he faced tonight for Arkansas, maybe the first of many. Be nice and laid back at Bomb Stadium tonight. <laughs> yeah, chill, as the kids say. <laughs> that place is jam packed. Day to be a Cowboy fan, no doubt. Here's Carson Binge. He's the only Cowboy that did not bat in the seventh inning. Oklahoma State with two in the first, back to back home runs, two in the third, back to back home runs, and a three run home run in the seventh. We're just watching on squeeze play the crowd at Bomb Stadium. Holy smokes. I would bet they were lined up 
down to the end of the street and then out beyond the scoreboard again. I think the first time I went to Bomb Stadium was for the regional in 07. Arkansas, Albany, Oklahoma State, and Creighton. That would have been Jordy Mercer's Oklahoma yep. State team. And Pat Vendetti pitching on both sides of the rubber for Creighton. Does that sound right? That's, yeah, that sounds about right, time wise. There's a walk to Carson Binge, and he's given a free pass to lead off the eighth. Nolan Schubert, two for three, two home runs. A pair of tape measure blasts. Oklahoma State won that regional, by the way. Knocked off Arkansas on a thriller, and then matched up with a Louisville team with uh, Chris Dominguez, who had yep. won on the road at Missouri. That was Louisville's first trip to the College World Series that year. Tony Vitello was an assistant coach at the time. Dan McDonald's trip. Is that his first year? Yeah. Here's Kevin O'Sullivan. Another guy that can run it up there. I mean, he struck out 22, just hasn't been great at controlling the zone. He is from Rocky Face, Georgia. First pitch strike, nothing in one. Free baseball. It's the best kind. Up the middle and against the ship, Shelton just kept the toe down. Plenty of time in Florida defensively in a perfect spot to defend this. High throw, but it was kind of one of those where Heyman maybe stretched a little bit too early. Further you go out, unless you can reach up and try to go get that. Being the first one at yoga class, here's Zach Earhart. What's your level of interest in yoga? Like, give me a range, like one, one to ten. Or sure. None. <laughs> I'm glad you asked for a range. <laughs> Who knows? Maybe we'll uh, <laughs> turn over a new leaf. <laughs> You'll be going to pure bar classes in no time. I prefer bar classes. Makes sense, Hart. Two balls and two strikes. Earhart, who homered in the first and sends a looping line drive into left field here in the eighth. And he will motor his way towards second. He's just missed a few others today, too. But solo home run in the first, double here in the eighth. Ball to left that he got pretty good, but this time out in front of what looks to be a slider, but keeps that zone low or the bat in the zone just long enough to hook it fair down that left field line. Aiden Mayola very nearly had a home run in the first. Fan interference was ruled and he was limited to a double, so. In the seventh, he had a 451, 451 foot shot 
to the catwalk. Yeah, the catwalk. I'm with you. I'm not going to bite, but I'm with you. <laughs> one ball, one strike. Evansville leads VCU 17 to 10. And Georgia's in front of UNC Wilmington 11 to 2. That game's nearly finished. Two outs top of the ninth in Athens. Two and two. It's interesting. I, I thought there may be some carnage with one seeds and a fair amount of carnage around the country. I mean, Arizona's been eliminated. Obviously, that, that would qualify. But by and large, the other one seed's been pretty good so far. Tennessee's going to go to 2 and 0. Oh. East Carolina got beaten in their opener, stayed alive today. Will use look good. Florida State's out in front to try to go 2 0. Virginia's 2 0. North Carolina's 2 0. Swing and a miss as Miola went fishing. And we're much of anything up the entire night. One hit for the Gators, and Holiday's first pitch has popped up to right field. Carson Binge, tomorrow's likely starter, puts it away for the first out. This is the game summary. It summarizes the game. It's been a holiday for Oklahoma State. And one L or two? One L. Okay. Holiday, celebrate. His season high in pitches is 130. That was four games ago on the road at Texas. Sixth time this year they've hit five or more home runs in a game. That Caglione, uh, Caglione allowed four home runs in the first three innings. If you have a guy who routinely goes 110, 115 pitches, routinely in, in Maxed out at 130 so far. That is a bullpen saver. Yeah, he he has been that man. He's he's been an ace. And they've really had two of them. Sam Garcia doesn't have quite the numbers, but close. Matt Holiday back in the building tonight. World Series champion with the Cardinals and owner of a really cool wiffle ball field. I'm hearing that. Uh, the lights didn't go out that night till about one. Oh, is that right? We went late into the evening on the wiffle ball. Into the morning. I understand that Matt is big into pickleball these days. I'm sure he's not competitive at that. Probably not. Yeah. Strike three looking and Michael Robertson. 8K for Brian Holiday. No relation. It's kind of keeps on rolling, man. It, it, it's one of those it's one of those games where when you watch holiday pitch he's making everything look so easy um, because when he misses he's missing where you would want to miss he has not missed over the wide of the plate consistently has lived on the corners the misses are just off the corners Florida has no idea what pitch is coming next this has been a master class breaking ball for a strike. Kind of see a lot of cool pitching performances this season, including a couple from Hagen Smith that were just dominating. But this would be right there with him. Hagen Smith struck out 14 in six innings in game one of their series against Texas A&M. Only allowed two hits. That was pretty impressive. Ground ball to the right side. Range by Ortiz. One, two, three frame again. Eight innings of work for Brian Holiday. Right. 
And the first pitch to Ian Doherty just misses the strike zone. Grayson Smith is the fifth pitcher of the game for Florida. Barring something nutty, it'll be Florida and Nebraska to start the day tomorrow. And while Caglione didn't give them the game that they were hoping for, four solo home runs over five innings, it should have some depth left. Yeah, they're both, Florida's bullpen will be fine. I mean, the guys that they've run out there, especially later, Slater was not very long, so you can use them again if you want. It wasn't great when he was in, but. Um, and then three freshmen to follow that have limited innings this year. Oscar's looking for another shot after Florida got him 5 2 yesterday in their opening round matchup. Stephen Kim loves this next graphic. The math is mathin. Kind of Brigham up. I just heard from our producer. Uh, Steven, he wants to know why you hate his graphics so much. I, I do like it. I was laughing on the inside. It was one of those. I didn't think it was a, my kids used to say. I didn't think it was a laughing type thing. Oh, it was, was smiling a, on the inside. Oh, it helps to win the first two. Dynamite drop in, Monty. Thank you. You know what you can't do? You what? can't lose the first two. No, that math doesn't work. A few surprises of those that did today. Vandy knocked out in two games. Wake Forest knocked out in two games. Arizona, the one seed, the only one seed at this point to be eliminated. Wake Forest was preseason number one, according to the folks at D1Baseball.com, and they are two and Q. I can't remember a preseason number one. Losing their first two. Florida did it three years ago. Except for Florida three years ago. Yeah. That, yeah, they, they would get past that. that. Yeah. You have to really dig. <laughs> Foul back. By the way, among those 90 NCAA championships we've talked about, fly ball to right. Wilson, number two, out number two. Yeah. Uh, today was the Division II rowing championships. Who took that one home? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> the folks who run the uh, Twitter account just I don't know. showed the trophy, but we don't know who won it. They all look very happy though. As we know it was Western Washington. That's who I had. I get on a heater about midway through the season. That, that was my pick. Have you seen the movie of the boys in the boat. Uh, yes. That was yeah. awesome. Did you read the book too. To third here's Dale Thomas took a funny hop puts it in his pocket. Second hit of the game for Avery Ortiz. It's a wonderful book, but now you know how it ends, so I'm not sure it's going to so be worth your time. Hey, you can read it. 
And most people knew what happened at the end of the Titanic, but still saw the movie. Think Holiday comes out for the ninth? No. I don't see anybody down there. What's his pitch count right now? In 15. Where are we at, Greg? Offering low to Lane Forsyth. 113 right now. Season high is 130 against the Longhorns, who have an early lead tonight against Texas A&M. One nothing UT. Two guys on, one out in the bottom of the second. Evan helped the Texas pitcher who issues a four pitch walk tonight. Swing and a miss. Uh, I'd like to make a nomination okay. and I'd like to nominate these Oklahoma State helmets as the best in college baseball history. Yeah, I mean, this is the way back machine. To, and I know they have buttons that go down, they're not pullovers, but this is this is back to the days that Josh grew up a bat boy. I mean, not the pinstripes, but the hats, the helmets. Yesterday was way old school. I mean, yeah. That was back to the Gary Ward days. Tradition plays. They got plenty of it here. Well, it's one thing to wear throwbacks, but you have to have been good during that throwback yeah. era for it yeah. to carry any meaning. They were good. Runners on the move. It's pulled foul. What do you think our hit rate on uh, squeeze play has been tonight? With what? The number of times we've been on? Yeah. Or when it's been good? It's been a little bit better. I, I, I think they're starting to come around a little bit. We should introduce ourselves. Not a bad idea. We're the new guys. They send a uh, strongly worded text tonight just to make sure that they know of our disappointment. Send them a total roll. That'll get them on the good side. Foul back. But he loves to get chocolate in the mail. Down in Norman, Oklahoma, and you second baseman for Oklahoma State. Tulsa Union products and the pitch to Jack Caglione is up 1 0. We got our answer. Brian Holiday back out there to try to finish this thing off. Was at 113, excuse me, 114 pitches before this inning started. Outside to Caglione, 2 0. You're not surprised. No, not given what he's done this year. Not surprised at all. He's he's been brilliant tonight. Two and one. Uh -oh. High fly center field. Drifting back Earhart, he's at the wall and it is gone. How much has gone right for Jack Caglione tonight? He was hitless coming into that at bat and he takes a yard for home run number 30 on the year. That just kept going and going and I think Earhart was a little bit surprised that it didn't end up in his glove. 109 off the bat for Caglione. That right there, home run number 30. The only one in college baseball history to go 30 in two separate years, and he does it on a fastball down and in. Second hit of the game that Holiday has given up, and it breaks up the shutout. Come on. And Ashton Wilson at the plate. Guys in the Oklahoma State bullpen are just. Leaning up against the fence. There is somebody throwing back there. I think this is probably one more base runner. Okay. If he gets one more base runner, they go get him. If not, see if he can finish it. Yeah. Home crowd really wanted that one, but it's a good strike zone. Cool.
Robert Krantz is the Cowboy slowly but surely warming up in the bullpen. Like he's ready to go. Breaking ball fought off. It's pretty good work by Wilson right there just to get a piece. You could see they kind of backed him up. He thought it was an elevated fastball at the beginning, then got enough to keep the bat alive. Punch out number nine for Brian Holiday. We're back to that slow curveball. It's, it's a different look than the slider. The, the movement profile isn't that big of a difference. Both have some down to it, but this, watch the bubble. A little bit up before it goes down. And hitters give up on it so often because they think it's an elevated fastball. But it's spinning so much that by, by the time it gets to home plate, it's down and back in the zone. Now Colby Shelton. Here's the one one. Yeah. We'll talk to Brian Holiday before we go off the air I believe and man I'm just curious which pitch he has the most confidence in. I, I don't know if there's a difference dribbler to the right side Brigham and shuffles it to him. Two down. And Holiday is one out away from a complete game win for Oklahoma State to put him in the regional final. Luke Heyman coming up. Here's one swing away from a shutout. What do you think's been his best pitch tonight? I don't know that there's been. I think fastball location to me has been unbelievable and it's set everything else up. But. I mean, he literally has been able to pick one of four. Brian Holiday is looking for his third nine inning complete game of the season. Did it against TCU on March 23rd. Against UCF last Friday. And now one strike away from doing it against Florida tonight. This will match his season high in pitches. The 0 2. It's the 11th time this season that Holiday has thrown more than 100 pitches. He has been a workhorse for this Oklahoma State team. On their feet at O'Brien Stadium. Swing and a miss. Strikeout number 10. Brian Holiday has pushed Oklahoma. State into the regional.
And the first pitch to Ian Doherty just misses the strike zone. Grayson Smith is the fifth pitcher of the game for Florida. Barring something nutty, it'll be Florida and Nebraska to start the day tomorrow. And while Caglione didn't give them the game that they were hoping for, four solo home runs over five innings, it should have some depth left. Yeah, they're both, Florida's bullpen will be fine. I mean, the guys that they've run out there, especially later, Slater wasn't out very long, so you can use them again if you want. It wasn't great when it was in, but. Uh, and then three freshmen to follow that have limited innings this year. Oscar's looking for another shot after Florida got him 5 2 yesterday and their opening round matchup. Producer Stephen Kim loves this next graphic. 